There's some specific terms for one grounds management that we are incorporating into some of our contracts because we're trying to make sure that we're in line with what the industry standards are and that we're also in line with what uh, meets the liability protection that we need to meet as far as all of our clients and just make sure that what we are communicating to our clients is consistent with what the industry is and also consistent with what our service partners are. So we also realize that some of our service partners use different terms. So we've actually incorporated the SIMA, the Snow and Ice Management Association's glossary of terms as a document that's referred to as the, the document that will precede all other documents as far as definitions of services. And there's some specific terms that I wanna go over, some of which we've included into our specifications and also some that we want to make sure that uh, you're aware of and that we're using them correctly. So the first one is the level of service. Does, uh, and, and this is something that in previous trainings that we've gone through, level of service has come up. That's something that you need to define. It's something that really defines what it is and how you're going to perform your contract. Level of service is basically just, it's what's expected by the client and what you're going to deliver. Right. The next one is uh, zero tolerance. And this is one that we've talked about quite a bit and it can be a little bit confusing and some people consider <clears throat> that to be the level of service, but it's not really a level of service. It's more something that describes when you start, right? So the, the term zero tolerance in the past has meant what? No, Jim, huh? Not, not tolerated. Absolutely, it's gotta be bare pavement at all times, all the time, yeah. And that's something that is really hard to do, especially considering a very heavy snow event or a heavy ice event. It, it, that can be very difficult. And does that really meet the level of service of what the, uh, for what the client wants? Maybe for a hospital emergency room entrance, but do the banks really need zero tolerance at two o'clock in the morning across their entire site? And that's, and that's where things can get a little bit different. And that's why we need to go back to the level of service and say, well, what is it that they really expect? And what does zero tolerance for that client mean? So zero tolerance is one of those terms that they've tried to define, but it is a little bit loose in its definition. And it really still depends on the level of service that you have with your client. Trigger depth point at which you and your client have determined is the point at which you're going to clear off snow and ice from that that surface so you're absolutely right and what's the accumulated amount to where you say okay now it's time to start plowing perfect that's trigger depth and there's different depths out there we've got clients that have one inch we've got clients that have two inches now this next one accumulation threshold Basically, this is saying that this is the amount of snow that we can tolerate. Please don't let it go beyond there. So that's, that's our accumulation threshold. So with one of our clients, they have a two inch accumulation threshold and a one inch trigger. So it starts snow and as soon as it hits one inch, they want you to plow and they don't want you to ever let it get over two inches. That's it, don't go. So surface temperature is, it's what is the temperature of the surface of which you're going to be servicing. So if it's blacktop, if it's concrete, if it's a sidewalk, if it's a big brick paver area, what's the surface that you want to service and what is its temperature? The only way to get that is, is either with the infrared guns. They, there's some other systems out there that are more expensive. Um, for the infrared guns that we have, those are close enough. And then de-icing. De-icing is a, what kind of activity? Pre or post activity for snow removal. Post. It's a post activity. So de-icing is when you apply ice melt or I should say de-icing chemical. You apply de-icing chemical to a surface after you've already moved snow off of the surface or as a, as a way to prevent future snow and ice buildup. Anti-icing, that is a pre or post. 
Pre. It's a pre-application. So anti-icing is what you do in order to prevent the bond of snow and ice on a surface. And on that, that's something that's a little bit different. Some of our clients, some of our service partners, there's a lot in the industry that call it pre-treating, which is actually a different term, and they spell that out. But uh, pre-treating is not really the correct term to describe what you're doing with anti-icing. So anti-icing is the correct term. We've gone through our contracts and our specifications to ensure that that's, that's what's in there. It, it talks about anti-icing and de-icing. We also encourage anti-icing, especially before serious or significant events that are projected. So it's the time at which it takes you to perform the services at your site go and do your cycle of other services wherever you need to do them and be back at that one at that beginning site to do the services again there so if you have a four hour cycle time and you have five <coughs> locations that you're servicing you're servicing five locations in a matter of four hours and that's your cycle time if you had less locations you might be able to decrease that cycle time and then you're able to come back more often to that same location cycle time is important because as we continue to add more and more clients that have significant requirements in their specifications to meet certain um, levels of service, talking about level of service, especially when we get into more technical stuff like hospitals and emergency room entrances and driveways, those become where we have to have a lot shorter cycle time because we're gonna need to be back there more often to make sure that it's safe and that uh, we don't have unsafe situations there. So site map, a site map is nothing more than here's the boundaries of the site. Here's what you need to service, include all of this. A site engineering plan actually incorporates a lot more detail than just a site map. It's, it's a visual representation that includes a lot of stuff, including hazards, speed bumps, curbs that jut out, parking blocks in areas that when you have six inches of snow on the site, you can no longer see some of those items. You might plow right through them. So a site engineering plan actually incorporates a lot more detail than just a site map. These are the terms that we felt like were really important that needed to be put out there now. We are going to be sharing these terms with all of our service partners as things to look for and be aware of so that they uh, can advance their companies to be seen as more of a professional and, and not just somebody that shovels snow. So, okay, any, any questions on the terms? Great, fantastic, thanks guys.